My name is Shukwe Mecca Chikas. Yeah, I have um, a question to the, the researchers and um, a reference also to the High Commission's comment. So the question, one, the two questions. One is, the were you able to, you're, you're alleging some sort of mono monopoly rents, essentially, that, that these companies are earning. Were you able to establish that also from the other end, looking at their annual reports, looking at their financial uh, reports, that sort of thing, just to sort of um, validate um, what you're saying and to, to reinforce the point, really. The second um, point is a, more br a broader point, which is a worry I have that this, the narrative that we are developing here, I, I mean, I, I definitely agree with all of the recommendations, but I think the there's danger of this narrative being a little bit, once again, you know, the poor African victims, um, big, bad, you know, Western companies. But I, I really want to go back to something that the High Commissioner mentioned, and that is the intra-African costs, the cost of mon mm. sending money within um, yeah, to African countries. Yeah. And, and I, would, I would like us to have recommendations that focus also, in addition to everything else you've said, so I'm not disagreeing with any of that, but focus also on what the African states can do within their existing remits. We know for, for a fact that there are, even as you were saying, that there are some, some, um, there are some um, these exclusive agreements. If you look at the laws already, they are illegal in some countries. They don't enforce the law. So there are things that African states can do. I don't just want us to let our African states off the hook and once again, oh, big bad, you know, Western Union money grab. There's, they're bad enough, but let's also look at what we can do to solve our own problems. Please. Okay, Thank thanks. You. Who's the second one? Yeah, you can. Hello. Well, we'll Sorry. take four. Uh, my name is Malcolm in, Harper in from Musoni in uh, Kenya and also Emkil in Delhi. Um, just two quick points. Uh, first, uh, we are getting at MoneyGram, Western Union, and Barclays. If there's anybody here from those organizations, I think they should be given a chance to defend themselves. Uh, and secondly, I don't, Roshanara has already stolen Abdi Rashid Sunder, but uh, that's uh, being uh, the case of Dahab Shil in Somalia. But I think the ca Dahab, what Dahab Shil shows is that a local remittance company can very effectively provide a wonderful service, even in a very difficult environment such as Somalia, so that it cannot be claimed that it's not possible for local companies to do this, that it has to be the big multinationals. Uh, and I hope that we can all take that message on board <coughs> as well as trying to deal with the threat to the Okay, thanks. Since it, you had the wrong impression, but you can ha you ha ask your okay, question, I'm Hikachi Wambu from Afford. Right. Um, two points. Um, one was to the, high, uh, um, to the High Commissioner from Rwanda, just to say that Afford has been de developing since 2003 a product called Remit Aid, which essentially is looking at how we can get tax relief on remittances. I mean, initially there were um, discussions with Gordon Brown when he was at the Treasury, and then once uh, the crash happened, those discussions have stopped. But uh, it would be good to revisit that mm -hmm. if there's a climate for that. And then the second point is, I think just to agree with um, uh, Chukwemeka that um, if you look at the graph ab about when the, the African prices start going up, it's when regulation comes in. Because uh, what, had, what was driving the cost down initially was the fact that there were a lot of players who came into the market. We knew from our conversations with Western Union and MoneyGram that they really found it very hard to compete and they had to drop their prices. At one point, you said it was the average was 12%. It was around 15% around 2001, 2002. And what began to drive the prices down was the presence of all the small African remittance businesses that flooded the market and came in. And since the banking and other regulations have made those um, actors, uh, made it much more difficult for those actors, you can see that the prices have gone back up. And so uh, the key thing to hear is to increase further competition. Take that one from over there. And w just to say that um, Mon MoneyGram uh, and Western Union, were, they were invited, but we don't know whether anyone is here from the organisations, but they certainly were on the list of invitees. Hello, uh, David Smith from British African Business Alliance. We're a network um, working with Africans in diaspora looking at business <coughs> opportunities. And one of the first things that we focused on was remittances. And we worked very closely with your predecessor, 
uh, Your Excellency uh, Ambassador Guteti, to set up a program with the Bank of Kigali, which made some inroads but was very small. And I think that one of the difficulties is that we're talking about a huge market worldwide, some 550 billion going in remittances, according to the World Bank. And then you look at Singapore to Philippines as being the cheapest route, and Tanzania to Kenya as being the most expensive. And it effectively comes down to banks and organizations in Africa, and the entrepreneurs who have the investment capability to get behind some of the new technology that is available. We are keen to find partners to help us bring forward a platform that we've been working on for some time that will provide electronic uh, remittances directly into on a person-to-person -person basis rather than what exists currently, which is a shop-to-shop -shop basis. And I think that if you look at the Western Union and the MoneyGram businesses, they actually do a very good business for someone who needs to get money home to a relation in an emergency. They know it can be delivered. They pay the price for dealing with that emergency. But it's extremely expensive. And I think we should all be working to find a much more cohesive way of bringing the diaspora together to solve some of the problems at this end and finding the finance to make some of this technology work. Just to say on the second panel, the focus would be much more on looking at potential solutions. So, you know, if there are any of those questions, then perhaps you can, you can save them for those because that's, that would be the focus of the second panel. Um, Kevin, do you want to kick off? Well, look, <coughs> just very briefly to clarify a couple of things. Uh, we had very long discussions with Western Union uh, on the basis of an initial draft of the paper. Um, and, and they actually provide some very helpful responses as well. We, we did invite them to be a participant on this panel, but they declined and were, were unable to attend. Uh, we also sent the paper to MoneyGram, uh, three separate versions of the paper, and, and didn't get any response from them at, at all at, at any point. So, um, I, you know, I, th I think all of the points that have been made are really good one, but, but I, I think particularly the, the point on African governmental responsibility, because you know, the, the reality is that a lot of the restrictive business practices um, are exploited by global companies and there are opportunities that are there for those companies. And I think the challenge for African governments, in a way, is to take those opportunities away. To say, you know, there's legislation, you know, as in all countries, that, you know, it has to be there to protect the public interest and the consumer interest in markets that are characterised by very high concentrations of economic power. And, and I think you know, the point that you make that you know, actually it's not just a question of legislating against exclusivity. I mean, Nigeria has legislated against exclusivity, but you still have exclusivity. I think there are 19 banks in Nigeria, the, of the 27 big banks, 19 of them have exclusive agreements with Western Union, four have exclusive agreements with, uh, with MoneyGram. So, you know, that, that's still there. So, you know, these... Um, I, I, the, what, one last point, that with, within Africa there are some promising initiatives actually both in Comesa um, and in East yeah. Africa on these integrated uh, remittance payments systems which are designed to facilitate um, easier transfer. The East African one has only just come into operation. Uh, I, you know, I have no idea whether it's going to work or not, but you know, I, th I think a lot will depend you know, not just on the administrative decree, as it were, but on allowing more entrance into the market in the form of microfinance institutions. Thank you. Excellency Jude, can you? Uh, thank you so much for the questions. Um, I don't know whether I have much to say. Uh, the question on um, Africa being a victim, it's not claiming that Africa is being a victim. The data shows that Africa is. We simply have got to focus on how to fix it, and I agree with you that uh, we also need to fix, you know, to fix what we can fix internally, and that is why uh, I think the recommendation for uh, reforms of the sector within Africa, but also I think even uh, in uh, in Western capitals, is also very important. With regard to the idea of uh, whether we can do something to incentivize the diaspora to send more by providing some 
remitted intervention, I think is a very good idea. I don't know why it stopped, but I think it is a conversation that people need <laughs> to continue having. Really because I think... Uh, the crash, there was no appetite for tax relief. <laughs> yeah, well, well, from what I hear this morning, the economies are turning around. <laughs> so <laughs> maybe we can begin the conversation. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and uh, I really, that's, I, I think it's, it's something that people need to continue having a conversation about. Thank you. Sure. Um, well, thank, thank you. I'm just going to pick up on this point about um, the, uh, sorry, it was, it was the point about banking, um, access, you know, getting banking facilities to people. Um, <laughs> the, the, the problem with Western Union and MoneyGram is that they don't have reach in certain countries. And uh, they certainly don't have reach in um, places like Somalia. Um, and they have limited reach in, even in Asia, they have limited reach in remote parts of the country. And when you then throw in natural disasters or humanitarian emergencies, which you know, even countries that are not in conflict face, um, you, the, these companies have, uh, have limits in what they can do. And that's where the point about small and medium-sized companies, uh, as well as providing competition, is so critical because they work on a trust basis. Um, they have links with people, you know, um, f over generations, um, family connections and so on. So actually it's a lot safer um, for people to use those small companies um, and know that the money is going to get there as well as it being competitive. I think the key point is that it needs to be competitive as well. Um, I'm, I'm very concerned about the, the fact that um, you've got, even if you dealt with the, the com competition points to do with these two big companies, which is really important, I'm very concerned about the fact that the international community has failed to come up with an alternative solution for those com countries that are just not going to get, you know, there isn't the facility to get money in. Um, so if you, it, w what we, what I think we do need is for the World Bank and the, d the donor countries to start to think about, um, you know, I, I, I've floated the idea of a, a remittance bank, um, which uh, it's not labor, it's not labor government policy, future labor <laughs> government policy, I stress, but it is an, I it is an idea really particularly to deal with those places that um, can't get money in, or, or it's, I don't know what you call it, a remittance facility that deals with these issues about cost, deals with issues about safety um, and uh, agents who are working in those countries, because these global problems that we're trying to address, particularly around security and finance, have to be addressed. Otherwise, the banks and the regulators will keep saying, well, regulators, American regulators keep saying to banks, sorry, we're going to fine you. You can see how banks then can come back and say, as Barclays has done and others have done, we're really worried about those fines and it's disproportionate compared to the trouble we're going to take to uh, continue facilities. That's their line of argument. And it's hard to argue with sometimes, even when you've got very good cases. So we need to try and find a way of addressing that problem so that people, people feel confident that they can do business with each other rather than just relying on the big, big, big companies where they can pass on the, the costs. Yeah, I totally agree with you. I think I wrote to you in October last year yeah. with the proposal. Okay, thank you. I think we'll we'll break now and then move on to uh, the, the next <coughs> panel. But first of all, to thank uh, everyone who's played such a, a re done so really well um, uh, on this panel. And your questions have been very challenging, and I hope you feel as I do that they've been answered uh, more than adequately by by the panel. It's been a very interesting session, and we can move on. I think now f to the next session, next panel. So if, if everyone can be back in five minutes.